Watching the special edition of the Casey Auction video blog. Today we're online uh, going to talk about the Albright Kemper Museum of Art and their pot of gold auction. Uh, and just for those of you who don't know, the Albright Kemper Museum of Art is up in St. Joseph, Missouri, and is a really impressive local museum uh, and kind of gets overshadowed by being so close to Kansas City. But they have an amazing collection. They were started in 1913 by a group of 12 women in St. Joe who thought the community deserved and needed to have more awareness of and introduction to the arts. The first painting they acquired was a George, was a uh, William Merritt Chase Venetian balcony. They have works by Thomas R. Benton, uh, Mary Cassatt, uh, local legionaries, Rembrandt Peel, George Catlin, dozens of other names that you'll recognize. And I, I was surprised the first time I was at the museum how powerful their permanent collection was. Uh, and let's jump right to our guest today. We have uh, ladies from the Albright, Albright Kemper Museum of Art. Uh, Megan, Laura, and Hannah are there with us. And Megan, let's start with you. You're the uh, interim executive director. Let me introduce you real quick. You're the interim ex executive director of the museum there. You're also the registrar and the exhibitions manager. You got your bachelor's and master's of fine arts from KU. Uh, you're getting married this fall. In 2009, you, uh, according to Lawrence.com, you thought you were Hermione or related to her most. Um, you are also, I'm curious, what is a South American ruminant that's related to the guanaco uh, from this online? Do you remember what that is? It's a vicuña. Vicuña, that's, she knows that because she was on Jeopardy and <laughs> uh, did very well. Uh, it's amazing what you can find out on, uh, on, on Facebook. Uh, Megan, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself or that I just did, how you got involved in the arts and what brought you to the Albrecht Kemper Museum? Well, I grew up um, near St. Joe, just over the river in Kansas, uh, and my family always loved going to museums, and I've always loved art, and then when I was 16, I got to go to Italy and decided I wanted to study art history. That, that was what I loved. I loved the paintings and the sculptures, so I got my art history degrees and realized that I wanted to work in museums. I wanted to be where the objects were. So I interned here at the Albright Kemper for a little while. Then I worked at a museum in Western Kansas. And then I came back here to be the registrar about 10 years ago. Excellent, excellent. And then uh, Hannah, let's go to you. Hannah Klepfer, you're in the back center right there. Uh, you got a Bachelor of Arts in Creative Writing and a minor in Public Relations from K-State and a Master's Degree in Professional Writing from Chatham. Uh, you wrote for a health company called Vegas Heart Online for a while. Uh, you've been in other communications positions. I'm curious, how was how did you come up with a kombucha mule to make for your video that you did about uh, a Buddha walks into a bar? I saw that on YouTube. I thought that was an interesting combination of events. I forgot to delete my master's project. Um, <laughs> I <laughs> when I did my master's, um, we were required to do certain types of media, um, including YouTube channel and um, blog. Uh, mine was called Books and Booze, so I would pair a drink with a book, and um, I just thought the kombucha was fitting with um, the health and lifestyle of, of Buddha walks into a bar. <laughs> nice. And so what brought you to the arts world? What uh, interested, did you, interested you in uh, working for a museum? How did you come across that path? So um, I've always kind of been into the arts. Um, when I lived in Manhattan, Kansas, I was on the Arts and Humanities Advisory Board. Um, and I've always grew up in the arts and the theater and things like that. Um, and then when I moved back to St. Joe, um, I'm originally from Hiawatha, Kansas. So when I moved home from Vegas, um, I started working in the arts here in St. Joe. And then um, when this position became open, it just seemed like a perfect fit. <laughs> Excellent, excellent. And then let's jump over to Laura Lawson real quick, the special events manager there at the Albright Kemper Museum of Art. Went to yes. Missouri State University, KU, 
you've had communications positions for a long time. Uh, how tell us how you came to the museum and uh, what do you like working about? What do you like most about working there? And, and well, I have been involved with museums since childhood. Um, friends, parents were really involved here throughout my entire life. I've been volunteering for Sugar Plum, just big fundraisers we've always done. Again, this museum's just been part of my life. Um, after moving and coming back, um, finishing school, I started here as just a server in the cafe on like Wednesdays and Thursdays, and I just loved it so much. I never left, and eight <laughs> years later, here we are. So, yeah, that's awesome. yeah. How long have you ladies all been working there at the museum? Um, I've been just over 10. Okay. I'm eight going on nine. Okay. Been here for six months. <laughs> wow. So we have uh, long time professionals and then a brand newbie right there. That's pretty exciting. A great mix. It is. Yeah. Yes. Um, so let's talk about the museum real quick. You know, I gave a quick history of it. Um, what, what more can you tell us about the museum? How it's been success? It seems to me like from the outside, it's a very successful museum in the uh, exhibitions you put on the collection that you've grown, uh, the standing that you have in the community. Tell us about the museum a little bit. And if people watching have questions for you, go ahead and please post them below and we'll ask them as we can. Yeah. Um, so our museum focuses on American art. Um, our collection of over 3,000 objects is primarily American art from the 18th, 19th, and 20th centuries. We have been very lucky over the years. Um, we've had great supporters here in St. Joe and Kansas City community. So like Jason mentioned earlier, um, we have a lot of really important artists. Uh, we have, yeah, William Merritt Chase, Rembrandt Peel, Mary Cassatt. Um, we've got a, a fairly strong collection of regionalist prints. Um, and it's, it's, we think of it as a little gem, like you don't necessarily expect a community the size of St. Joe to have a museum this strong. Um, we've always had an active exhibition schedule. We um, do about 10 exhibitions a year that rotate. Um, for example, right now we have um, the Studio Art Quilters Associates, which is a regional exhibition of art quilts. And then Power to the People, Mexican printmakers from World War I to the Cold War. Um, that's a really interesting collection of prints from uh, Kansas City collectors, Jim and Virginia Moffat. Well, the Moffats have been uh, supporters of yours for a long time, as, as uh, Dr. William Sabatez and his wife. Mm -hmm. um, why do you, it seems like there's obviously, uh, there's options here in Kansas City they could support as well. What do you think drives them, inspires them to be involved with uh, the Albright Kemper as opposed to doing something here in Kansas City? Um, I think it reaches a new audience, um, and, and also our spaces and our exhibitions, um, you know, it's just a little different than being at a larger museum, like the Nelson or something like that, so we can really focus on um, on a collection like this with one or two exhibitions at a time. I would also like to add the connection with Crosby Kimper yes. and the Kimper Contemporary Museum, so I think maybe that is interesting to people in Kansas City as well. Absolutely, absolutely right. Yeah, and you're right. I think it is uh, exposing it to different audiences is, is a big part of it. Uh, I, I tell you, I've been up there for a couple of events, a couple of different times, and I was the first time I walked through. I was absolutely gobsmacked at the quality of the work, uh, the quality of the facility, how it was laid out. I mean, you all really have a, a well-run organization up there, uh, and I think it's it's a shame that people in Kansas City don't know more about it. I think it seems like it's it's so close, really that it's a, a, an easy day trip. Speaking of that, you guys are open right now, aren't you? Or are you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, we, yeah. Go ahead. yeah, we're open our normal hours, which are 10 to 4, Tuesday through Friday, and 1 to 4 on Saturdays and Sundays. Um, we, we'd love to have visitors. We're just asking people to wear masks when they come visit. That's we awesome also have classes going on. Yes. We have some art classes that can be found on our website. Um, and they're all socially distanced, and we encourage masks as well for those. But what, kind, what kind of classes are you guys offering right now? We have um, our kids' class next week, our last one of July, um, our Be Creative class. Um, she does a great job of tying um, the kids' lessons with the artwork that's in the museum. Um, we also have a few um, painting and fabric classes coming up. The, for adults. For adults, yes. <laughs> She offered classes for kids and adults. That's cool. Um, 
So let's talk about the pot of gold auction real quick. That's kind of what we what started this odyssey. Um, Jim, we do a big event every year. He actually had us scheduled to come up and call the auction, which we we're excited to do. But obviously, COVID came along and has changed everything. Um, <laughs> why don't you tell us about the auction a little bit uh, and and what the funds and proceeds are are used for? If there's something in particular, and and how people can get involved with that. Yeah. So this is actually our 43rd pot of gold auction. Um, it's we rely on this uh we rely on our fundraisers very heavily because we're privately funded so um all money matters <laughs> so to speak but uh, the pot of gold auction is something we rely on um each year we've been we typically have a nice dinner a nice formal dinner and it's like live and silent auction items we do a ton of work going into it and the event itself is very entertaining. Um, I mean, it's a live auction and we have like really nice, unique items. Um, I want to stress again that we rely so much on this event to be successful, which it always, well, it is yeah. usually always successful. We're hoping this year is too. Yeah. So we're trying it something totally new um, and doing the online auction with Casey Auction Company. And it actually kicked off yesterday and is ending Wednesday the 29th. Absolutely. And yeah, there's already been a couple of dozen people register for that auction. And there's been I know, it there. sounds promising. Yeah. So I hope it's, I hope it, yeah. Hope yeah. we get good stuff. Yeah. Normally, normally it was scheduled to happen at the end of April. So, you know, obviously that, that didn't work this year. <laughs> didn't work this year. Absolutely not. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about some of the items in particular. So there's a wide range of contemporary art. Some antique paintings were donated. There are spa days. There are digital advertising packages. There's a wide, wide range of events. Uh, why don't you, each of you, tell us a little bit about what's your favorite or most in, what's the most interesting item from the uh, auction for you? Let's uh, let's start with uh, Hannah. Let's start with you in the back there. What's the most interesting piece in the auction to you today? Um. So the piece of artwork that I love the most is um the chair um i just think it's very aesthetically pleasing but um i'm also um offering a yoga class here at the museum a happy hour yoga class that people can bid on for a group of their friends and you just get to do yoga here at the museum after hours and it'll be a really fun and different type of event to do at the museum excellent are you a yoga instructor then do you do, do you teach yoga regularly yeah, so um, I'm in the process of earning my 200-hour certification, but I have already started teaching. So um, I do teach somewhat regularly before COVID happened. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's very cool. Laura, tell, how about you? What do you think? What's your most in, what's the most interesting piece to your exciting yeah. thing? So my most favorite, well, interesting. I should say <laughs> most interesting piece and favorite. I mean, I like this piece a lot. Everyone will. Um, Twilight Garden Statuary in town. It's, it's a local uh, business here in St. Joseph. Todd Cooper is an artist himself and creates all the statues, you know, right in his back door. So um, I, you know, asked what he could do for us and he made a one of a kind um, like garden ornament is what they call it um but it's it's a girl with a whispering face and it's very very well made and um i'm really happy that it's like the one of a kind and made it for us for this so it's really cool, yeah, that's it's really cool. the only great. place they can ever be bought is here at the auction that's a really cool thing megan what's your most interesting your favorite piece in the auction um well i'm just excited in general about how much art we have because we don't always have this much art when it's in person um, I th there's a lot of really fun things from local artists, but uh, I think it's kind of fun. We, there's a set of Richard Lubosky prints and um, the, a printing plate that goes with it. He was an artist originally from St. Joe who worked in uh, France for most of his career. Uh, so like this is a really special sort of uh, item you're not going to find. Uh, then we've also just got some fun stuff. We've got a ghost tour, a private ghost tour here at the museum, um, some ghost hunters. Um, a cooking class. Yeah. Um, I've never seen the ghost here, but most people have. So I, I think people will. will um, I will say ghost hunters did say this. There are, there's energy here, but not, <laughs> you know, it's not bad and negative. So. so I was going to ask you all about that. I saw the ghost tour on the catalog. 
Uh, it's from like 8 p.m. to 3 a.m. or something like that. Obviously, you have to be overnight. How did that, where did that, who who first realized or thought the, the facility was haunted or, or possessed? And, and Since before we got here. Yeah, and there's always been rumors it's haunted. People have seen things. Um, we've had ghost hunters want to come in before. And so we got started talking about this and we just thought it would be a great experience. We've talked about doing some sort of ghost hunting event in the past. So we thought, hey, let's make this a private um, kind of uh you know, really special behind the scenes ghost hunt. Um, part of the building is is an old house uh, that the uh, Albright family lived in. Um, so that's what most people say they see as members of the Albright family. We've had um, we had a former employee who swore she heard parties going on when she would get here really early in the morning. That it sounded like people talking in champagne corks and um, so it's, it's usually people have positive experiences with the ghosts. <laughs> Well, that's a good, so tell so you mentioned that part of the museum is an old house. Tell yes. and that's is that the Albright connection? How does what where's where's the name Albright Camper come from? Sure. Um William um and Lena Albright um built the house in the 1930s. Mr. Albright ran the Western Tablet Paper Company that then became Mead. Um they're probably best known. Most people know the um the big chief tablet. So that's that's what the product they were best known for. Um, they built the house in the 1930s, and then after um, they had both passed away in the early 1960s, their their children weren't living here in the house, so they donated um, <laughs> they donated the building to be used for an art museum. So originally it was just in the house, and then in the 1990s uh, they realized the collection had outgrown the space, so we added on to the building. And Crosby Kemper was one of the major supporters of the. Uh, expansion and so that's when it went from being the Albright Art Gallery to the Albright Kemper Museum. Okay, that's very, very cool. That is one of my favorite parts of the museum is the old mansion. Yeah. It's just there's so much history in, yeah. inside this place. It's what's not to like yeah. about working here. It's pretty great. Yeah. <laughs> Our offices are all up here in the, the bedrooms. <laughs> Really? So you're you're upstairs right now? Is that where? Yeah, we're in a, a old bedroom. Yeah, it's my office. But yeah. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Now it it's is. a neat, it makes a neat facility. And uh, you mentioned Richard Lebowski, who was a, a really interesting Saint Joseph artist. There's a pretty good history of arts in the Saint Joseph area. Um, mm -hmm. You have what's like the representation in the gallery of local artists? Do you guys focus on that, or is it? Um, how much we is your focus? what. One of the, the main parts of our mission is nurturing local and regional artists. Um, we, we try to um, exhibit local artists. Um, one of our major exhibitions every year is our membership show that's been going on for is it 45 years. I, I think so. so, yeah, for 45 years. Every year we have um, anyone who's a member of the museum can enter it. Uh, and it's so much fun. It come, It ranges from high school students, um, people just taking some classes to professional working artists that are well-known regionally um, and, and everything is up together. Um, and it's, it's one of the best shows yeah. <laughs> always. So it's great. It has to be a really diverse mix of artwork. Cause like you said, you open out it to anybody and you could get, you could stick figures on a card to completely finish. Oil well, there are, you know, some guidelines and rules. <laughs> 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 it's, it's great to see. It, it really is. <laughs> That's awesome. But yeah, we do lots of other um, things for exhibitions, like to be part of the community and just get that exposure for people that aren't, you know, normally would never have that opportunity. So we do the membership show. We do the high school exhibition just for high schoolers. Um, we just added the homeschool exhibitions. We do UCP preschool exhibitions. Um, we have a national juried undergraduate exhibition. Mm -hmm. um, we have Northwest and Missouri Western faculty exhibitions. So mm -hmm. yeah, we're, how many we love our community. So. Absolutely. How, many, how many exhibitions do you all do on, a, on an average year? Obviously this year we can't you kind of have to discount 2020, but it's a, about 10 a year. Really? That's mm -hmm. exciting. That's exciting. Yeah, um, we, yeah, it changes about every three months. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you have, what, three or four different spaces that you do exhibitions in the, in the gallery there? Um, yeah, we have two primary spaces that we use, and then there's a couple of smaller spaces that we use for things like the, the preschool art and the um, homeschool exhibitions. 
Very cool. Mm -hmm. Well, that's kind of uh, that's kind of an amazing stuff. There's 70 some odd items in the auction. There's a little bit of something for everybody. Before we go, I'm gonna let you uh, let the three of you give you kind of closing statements, and then I'll wrap it up. But is there anything else we didn't talk about today that you'd like to like to bring attention to viewers about the museum, about the auction, uh, about St. Joe, or anything else that you have on your mind? There's an option on um, the auction website to become a member, um, and when you become a member, you also get access to um, kind of the first know all about things that are going on and things that are coming up. And if you're an artist, you can enter the show. Yeah. Well, one thing I do want to touch base on, because I think it's pretty significant, it, you know, the pot of gold, like I was I mentioned earlier, it, it's normally a, a sit down dinner and there's, you know, a, a big event with it. Um, this year, there's no ticket price. So, um, you know, first time I think maybe it's been free, you know, for and accessible to anyone. Um, you know, not just the 150 or so people that are in the room, like while we're doing the event. So, this is a really awesome opportunity for anyone that's ever been interested in possibly doing more or even wanting to be a part of the Pot of Gold. It's um, right here for you. <laughs> so, Absolutely. there's a there's one of the first lots in the auction is called the AKMA Join and Give. It's a link right to your website, which I'm excited to have in there that people can learn about how they can get involved with, support, and more information about the museum. Like I said, I think it's an amazing little gem of a museum. Uh, and, you know, St. Joe's not the middle of nowhere, but it's certainly not a major city. Uh, people don't think of it as a, as a major metropolitan area, but you definitely have a collection there that's worthy of anybody's time. Yeah, and and honestly, with, with the way things are this year. Um, I know a lot of people's travel plans have changed. People are wanting to stay closer to home. So um, for, for our audiences in Kansas City and Topeka and things like that, St. Joe's a great place to take a day trip. We have great restaurants. Um, we have our own. Yeah, yeah. We, we have a cafe that's open on Wednesdays and Thursdays if you're here during the week. Um, and then there's other museums in town. It's a great place to make a day trip. It, it is. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Plenty of space and social distance and all that. But I, I did want to start, I want to touch base on what our funds do go go to for this event. Um, like I said, we have several fundraisers a year that we rely so heavily on these funds because we're it's all private. We don't get money from the state, a little bit from the city, not much, right? Yeah, we get we get a little bit of money from the state, but we we aren't a government funded museum. So literally, like these things help our general operating, in, like in general, it it could be to mow the lawn, it could be for our trash bill. You know, <laughs> I mean, I'm just like giving you like anyone that becomes a member donates anything. What they're helping is preserve the museum, and and helping us maintain it. So. Yeah, and even though you're open, I have to Im imagine that your restaurant isn't as busy and your doors aren't swinging open as often. Um, because there's there's a lot of people just not going out, period, right now. So yeah. anything that can be done, you know, the arts are such a crucial part of all of our lives and so important to every community, uh, much less a community like St. Joe. And like you said, it's a great day trip. There are other museums there that I assume are open as well, if you guys are, mm -hmm. yeah. and others. So it's, it really is a really neat place to go spend a day, um, and, and hopefully some of our viewers will do that. So ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much for watching um, the special edition of the KC Auction video blog. I was excited and I'm really excited and honored that Megan, Laura, and Lauren and uh, Hannah joined me today to talk about the uh, Albright, Albright Kemper Museum of Art and the Pot of Gold Auction. If you have any questions for them, go ahead and post them here. We'll, this video will be live or be on our Facebook page and YouTube page for a while. Ask questions below or send us a question at uh, info at kcauctioncompany.com. You can give us a phone call at 816-283-3633. We can answer any questions about the Pot of Gold auction, about the Albright Kemper. We can connect you with the gallery as well. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. Have a great afternoon, and please register and bid for the uh, Pot of Gold auction. We'll post the link to that auction here in the comments in just a few minutes. Thanks, and have a great day.